Hi, in this tutorial we're going to do a thermal simulation of a CPU chip which is attached to a heatsink in Autodesk Fusion 360. Now I'm going to rotate this a little bit so that you can see the components involved. And as you can see we have a CPU right here, that's this red piece. And the CPU is mounted to this board which is just there for reference. And it's attached to the heatsink, which is this aluminum piece on the top. That being said, we're going to enter our simulation workspace by coming down to our tab here, and we're going to come down to simulation. And within the simulation workspace, the first thing we want to do is select our materials. So I'm going to come over here to materials, and I'm going to come down to study materials. And what I want to do is change my heatsink material to be aluminum. So I'm going to come down to aluminum 6061. And for my CPU chip, I want to come down to copper and select it from the list. For the board, we're going to come down to our epoxy resin, which is right here. And we're going to hit a with our materials selected, we now want to come up to loads click on the arrow and come down to thermal loads. Under thermal loads we're going to come down to bodies and we want to select this body, the CPU chip. So I'm going to click on it and under type I want to change this to internal heat. That's all the way here on the bottom. So let's change the heat units to be watts and for the watts, we want to have 140 watts. And this is about the hottest that a consumer level quad core CPU will go up to. So with that selected, what we want to do is we want to hit OK for this to be um, selected. And from here, what we want to do is create yet another thermal load. So we're going to come up to thermal loads uh, once more. And we're going to come to our um, selection here. And what we want to do is we want to select all the faces. So I'm going to come over here and click Select All Faces. And now I'm going to come down to the type of load. And I'm going to click on it and click on Convection. And with all of them selected, all the faces, um, with all the faces selected we're going to just select the two bodies and so these two bodies the CPU and the heatsink uh, come up to 184 faces and for the type of load which is convection and it's going to be constant I'm going to um, make sure that my units are set to the um, watts I'm sorry, the uh, meter squared Celsius, which is right here, meter squared Celsius, watts per meter squared Celsius. And this is going to be 10. And that's our convection value. And this convection value, by the way, is the heat transfer coefficient of low speed flow of air over a surface. So that's, that's kind of like the estimate that we're using for this example. And if you look under the units for the temperature value, you can go and change this to Fahrenheit um, if that's what you'd like. So 68 Fahrenheit for ambient temperature. And we're going to hit OK on this. So 10 watts. And with that said, the next thing we want to do is apply a third load. So come up to thermal loads. And we want this one to be radiation, so I'm going to come and select radiation. And what we want to do is select our um, heat sink. And the, oh, let me move this a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. For the emissivity, I'm going to change this to 0.1. And the reason why I'm doing that is because this is the emissivity of 
aluminum 6061 T6. And we selected aluminum 6061. So that, that's just going to be our um, emissivity for this example, which is um, pretty much accurate to the actual material. So um, I have to be careful here because I selected the face. But what I really want to do is I want to select all the faces of just the heat sink. So I can kind of turn this around and make sure everything is selected. Very important. And I'm going to make sure that this is the same unit as before, 20 Celsius. And we're just going to um, hit OK. And so we now have our loads all um, inputted. So we have the internal heat, the convection, and the radiation. And these are the three forces or loads that um, we want to look at. So um, from here, I'm going to come to contacts and just make automatic contacts. And you can change this tolerance uh, to make it smaller, but um, this is about four thousandths of an inch, and, and that's the default, so we're just going to use that. And now um, it's just going to generate those contacts. And so from here, um, what we want to do is run our simulation. So I'm going to do a pre-check, and it looks like all the information was entered. And I'm going to come to Solve, and I'm going to do a local solving of the thermal analysis. Our simulation has loaded, and we're now viewing the results. As you can see, our max temperature is 116.5 Celsius, and our minimum temperature is 83.72 Celsius. This is the max and minimum temperature, or the smallest and largest, largest temperature, of our entire assembly. So the smallest and greatest temperature. If you'd like, you can come down here to this drop-down and change this to Fahrenheit. Now, one thing that we can learn from this design-wise is, as you can see, the CPU um, has most of its heat um, being transferred to the heat sink right here in the center. And that's not a surprise because that's the first place that it's actually touching. So I'm going to hide the CPU chip and the board. And we can look at this from the bottom when we can see that this is the hottest spot right here. And if we look at the top, you can see that it's a little bit less hot because the, the, um, the temperature, the energy needs to come all the way through this thickness of the plate and get to the top here. But um, it's still very hot here at the top, and that energy sort of um, propagates through the material. And here is the coolest spot right here on the end, and it's 182 Fahrenheit. Now, if you remember, our ambient temperature was 20 Celsius or 68 Fahrenheit. That's sort of like the room temperature. And the fact that this is 182 Fahrenheit means that we're way out of the range of where we should be. In a perfect world, this temperature for the minimum would be the temperature of the room. The biggest takeaway for this part geometry is that this heat sink needs to be designed better, either larger or with a different geometry that can dissipate heat better, wherein the coldest part of it is either room temperature or closer to room temperature. That's uh, the biggest takeaway. And so one thing that I'd like to try now is I'd like to change the internal heat so I can come over here and click edit. And I want to change the internal heat of this uh, CPU. Instead of 140 watts, I'm going to change it to 85 watts. And once I hit OK, you're going to see that this comes up with a little out-of-date um, little warning sign right here. And that's to be expected. Our pre-check um, now shows that there are some problems. 
And the reason is because we need to solve this in order to um, repair these results because um, there was a change in the temperature for the internal heat. So that's to be expected. I'm going to let this uh, simulation run and we're going to see how different the results are. Our simulation has loaded and we're now viewing the results. As you can see, our temperatures have changed a lot. Our minimum temperature is now 59 Celsius. Um, this is uh, a lot cooler than before. In Fahrenheit, this is 138 Fahrenheit. In contrast to 181 Fahrenheit, which is what we saw in the last simulation, and 83 Celsius. So this is definitely a lot better and a lot closer to our room temperature that we set for 68. But this is still very far from that number, even when we turn down the wattage on our CPU. So I'm going to try something different. Instead of changing the heat values, I'm going to try to change the geometry. I'm back here in my design tab where I want to make a couple changes to my design. I'm going to click on this face and I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to quickly add two rectangles which are two point rectangles and they're going to come out like so. I'm going to add one to the other side here as well and let me add a couple basic dimensions here. I want this to be um, about a hundred thousandths. Same thing on the other side. And I'm going to move these um, to about here. I can set a dimension from this wall right here to the origin and make that 0.7 and same thing here on the other side. And with those parameters set, let me just make these horizontal, these two points. And now, um, th this is along the lines of what we want. We want to make sure that we don't interfere with the holes that we have here. But I'm going to create these two extrusions and if I move this out a little bit I could actually add another one. So I can come in and add another uh, two point. We just kind of drag this up to about here and make another one as well. And I want to set this to be 0.1 again. And same thing on this one. And I can just kind of drag it and set a dimension of about 0.1 away and 0.1. And now with these set, I can finish my sketch and I can come to extrude and I can click on all of the extrusions and I can set the extent to be two object and I want to select this face and hit OK. And now I have two extra uh, fins and I can also add some fillets here just for the final touch. I can uh, make this about 30 thousandths and hit OK. Now let's come back to our simulation tab. And what we need to do now is finish our results. And the new geometry is now being shown. And we're getting some errors here because our mesh is now out of date and our results are out of date. And that's to be expected because when the geometry changes, the mesh changes and therefore the results change as well. So let's come and solve our simulation one more time. Once again, our results have loaded and we can see the subtle changes that have happened. Over here where it says max, our old max was 173.8 and our old minimum was 138. Now it's 136. So this is definitely a small change here. Now as you can see, I moved this out a little bit more and I also added another rib here in the middle off camera. 
And the reason why this is 166 is because of the propagation of the heat now through this uh, rib, which is directly um, sort of uh, intersecting the hottest part of the CPU. And so that's something that's going to help a lot um, with the temperature regulation. So these are the things that have changed. And as you could see, if I continue to move this out further and further away from the uh, heat source, the internal heat source, uh, it would just get cooler and cooler and cooler. Uh, same thing if I added more thickness to this plate, it would just continue to um, bring it further and further away from the heat source and add more material for the heat that to need to propagate through. So these are the sorts of changes that the simulation uh, will motivate you to do. Uh, I hope you got a lot of value out of this tutorial and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you.